The Sri Lankan government is declaring complete victory over the Tamil Tigers. The Tigers understood the power of propaganda. They accused the Sinhalese government of apartheid-like atrocities. In any war, truth is the first casualty. War and propaganda. Next on Global Pulse. A comparison of how broadcasters worldwide cover Sri Lanka's civil war. Sri Lanka's Tamil population has suffered political, religious, and ethnic prejudice since Sri Lanka's independence from Britain in 1948. The LTTE, or Tamil Tigers, were founded in 1975 to fight for an independent homeland. The BBC and India's IBN summarize the history of the Tamil Tigers. It's a war that has lasted on and off for a quarter of a century. Not only on land, but also at sea. And the Tamil Tigers even became the first group of their kind to have an air force. The LTT pioneered the use of unconventional tactics. They were the first to use improvised explosive devices. They had ideologically driven suicide bombers. And at least in the initial years, they were armed, trained and fed by an Indian establishment. Then 9-11 gave Colombo what it needed the most. Recognition of the LTT as a terrorist group. The way was paved for the government offensive. The rebels were soon fighting to hold on to an ever-shrinking amount of territory. Reliable and independent information about the war in Sri Lanka is scarce. Australia's ABC and CNN showed how the government and the Tamil Tigers control what information gets out. If you speak out, they'll kill you. Pearl Favanagayam was saddened to learn of the death of her former editor, Lasanta Wickramatunga of the Sunday Leader. Vikramatunga was shot on January 8th. His paper had been critical of the Sri Lankan government's war against the Tamil Tigers. From the very beginning, the Tigers understood the power of propaganda, the need to win and hold the hearts and minds. And these women, they are the Truth Tigers. The Truth Tigers are expected to be in the first wave of any attack, recording images of a war fought on a scale few outside Sri Lanka comprehend. After the fighting, every order, every move is analysed. It's this attention to detail that makes the Tigers one of the most ruthlessly efficient guerrilla armies in the world. With limited access to the war zone, international media found it hard to decipher truth from propaganda. South Africa's SABC echoed the Tamil version of events. Dramatic new amateur television footage shows uh, Sri Lankan aircraft dropping bombs on civilians in a safe zone despite a pledge to stop using heavy weapons. The rebel Tamil Tigers, they accused the Sinhalese government of apartheid-like atrocities against the minority Tamil population. India's South Asian newsline was wary of the Tamil Tigers' numerous claims of government atrocities. Amateur video provided by Tamil Vision Canada showed what looked like the aftermath of an attack on a makeshift hospital. Tamilnet, a pro-rebel website, claimed the government killed 47 people and critically injured at least 55 with artillery shelling. The accuracy of the report and the date of the footage could not be independently verified. The Sri Lankan military has denied the report of the attack and the government called it as another fabrication. Al Jazeera English questioned the government's version of attacks in a supposedly safe civilian zone. For weeks now, the Sri Lankan government has said images like these broadcast on pro-Tamil outlets are just Tamil Tiger propaganda. But now that appears to have changed. UNISAT says these pictures show craters which were formed inside the zone between the 15th of March and the 19th of April the day before the Sri Lankan army breached the Tamil Tigers' defences, beginning the exodus of civilians. As the BBC shows, regardless of which version of events is true, the real losers in this war are the thousands of civilians caught in the crossfire. For more than a quarter of a million Tamils driven from their homes by the conflict, the grim reality now is a government-controlled camp we visited in the north. Barbed wire and memories of the horrors they've seen in the war that will be hard to erase. We came thinking it would be better here, but it's worse, we're not free. There were no independent witnesses to the final battle, and European foreign ministers have called for an inquiry into possible war crimes by both sides. For Global Pulse, I'm Erin Coker. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. 
Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs that connect you to the world.